Then I next call upon Dr. Anshia Mool, BA, to present her paper, FPAT, Etiology and Management of IOP Rise Falling Posterior Chamber Fake Intraocular Lens Implantation. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my topic is etiology and management of IOP rise following posterior chamber fakic IOL implantation in myopic patients. No financial interest. So fakic IOLs provides an effective solution for uh, high refractive error candidates who are not suited for corneal refractive treatments. And uh, fakic IOLs are in great demand because of their advantage like faster visual recovery, high efficacy and reversibility. Currently, there is only one FDA approved posterior chamber uh, uh, fakic IOL which is implantable columnar lens ICL which was released by Star Surgicals uh, which was made up of a biocompatible material called columnar which is a blend of polymer and collagen and uh, this um, uh, this has a plate haptic design and an anterior lens vaulting which is designed to prevent the crystalline lens contact. The vaulting predisposes the eye uh, to pupillary block glaucoma to prevent this a peripheral hydrotomy is suggested uh, before placing the V4B model. But the latest B4C model has a central flow technology which has a 0.36 millimeter uh, central aperture uh, called the aqua port for the flow of uh, aqueous flow which prevent the pupillary block hence peripheral iridotomy is not needed in this uh, lens model. Uh, the mechanisms of IOP rise uh, reported includes uh, steroid response, retained visco, uh, pupillary block etc. Uh, retained viscoelastic or intraoperative AC overfill uh, was managed by conservative management with oral and topical anti-glaucoma medications. Uh, steroid response was managed either by stopping topical uh, prednisolone eye drops or switching to low potent uh, steroid drops and adding anti-glaucoma medications as needed. Pupillary block uh, needed a peripheral iridotomy or en enlargement of an existing PI. Pre-existing uh, juvenile open angle glaucoma needed uh, AGMs for IOP control and malignant glaucoma needed pass plana vitrectomy and peripheral iridozone low hyaldo vitrectomy along with AC reformation and AGMs as needed. Aim of our study was to evaluate the various etiologies for uh, raised intraocular pressure following phagic ICL V4C model implantation in myopic eyes to discuss their management and outcomes in a consecutive case series. So this was a retrospective study uh, conducted on all myopic patients who underwent ICL implantation during the period of uh, August 2015 and January 2023. All patients underwent a complete ophthalmic evaluation uh, and an ICL surgery was performed by a single surgeon under topical anesthesia, a 3 millimeter temporal clear corneal incision and two paracentesis made. AC filled with 2% uh, HPMC, ICL injected into the AC, food plates uh, tucked beneath the iris, visco washed out using uh, automated coaxial uh, irrigation and aspiration with BSS solution and the pupil constricted with pilocarpine. Postoperatively, uh, all patients were treated with topical prednisolone 1% eye drops uh, given, on, uh, given as tapering doses uh, for 6 weeks and uh, topical moxifloxacin 0.5% eye drops given uh, 4 times a day uh, for 1 week. And uh, the follow-up uh, data was collect collected on uh, first day, one week, one month, and three months. An IOP of more than or equal to uh, 21 millimeter of mercury and two separated uh, separate occasions was defined as ocular hypertension. And uh, IOP of more than or equal to 21 millimeter of mercury with glaucomatous disc of field changes was defined as glaucoma. So these are the demographics and characteristics uh, of the subjects uh, taken for the study. Males to female ratio is 31 is to 34. Uh, mean age of subjects with raised IOP was 28.32 uh, years. Uh, mean refractive error in diopters was minus 10.14. Uh, mean preoperative IOP was 13 and mean postoperative IOP found was 14.26. Uh, Goniosopy status was open angles in all patients. Um, out of the total 412 eyes who underwent ICL implantation, 65 eyes that is 15.78% of eyes had uh, IOP rise. And the mean time for post-op IOP rise was 18.82 days. The time of onset for IOP spike was uh, in day one follow-up, 11 eyes had um, IOP spike. In one week follow-up, 14 eyes um, uh, noted IOP uh, spike. And one month follow-up, 40 eyes noted uh, high IOP. The possible mechanisms of raised IOP in our cohort was um, one is retained visco in 17% of eyes, which is 11 eyes. 
they had um, uh, they had uh, raised iop in the immediate post op period and uh, this can be also be due to intraoperative anti t chamber overfill and uh, uh, other group that is 54 i that is 83% of the uh, uh, i had steroid response they had iop under control in the immediate post operative period but subsequently increased during uh, follow up no excess intraocular inflammation was noted out of 54 eyes uh, 14 eyes was uh, found to be having high iop in the one week follow up and 40 eyes in the one month follow up 0.8 to 26.2% of post icl implantation eyes have reported high iop rise in our case it is Uh, we got fifteen point seven eight percent of uh, subjects developed IOP rise. Multiple mechanisms included. Uh, also, the eyes with high myopia are at a higher risk of steroid-induced uh, ocular hypertension and primary open-angle glaucoma. Steroid-induced IOP rise was usually within one to four weeks, uh, which is reported as a common cause in our uh, common cause. Our case also reported eighty-three percent of steroid response, which was noted between one to two weeks of uh, follow-up. Uh, if diagnosed early and intervened appropriately, this may not lead to glaucoma. Glaucomatous optic nerve damage uh, occurs if uh, IOP remains elevated for prolonged period. Changing to low potency steroid drops along with short course of AGM is needed in this uh, in this group. Six eyes required AGM beyond three months to control uh, the IOP in our study. The second uh, reason uh, was retained viscoelastic or overfill of the anterior chamber. This presence in the immediate post-op period often results with short course of anti-glaucoma and in anti-inflammatory medication. More common with high viscous OVD like sodium hyaluronate uh, compared to HPMC. We used two percent HPMC in all our cases, and OVD was removed using coaxial irrigation and aspiration. Despite this, we had eleven eyes with raised IOP due to retained OVD. Eight out of the eleven eyes resolved within one week with AGM, and three eyes were on topical AGMs at the final follow-up. V4C model of uh, ICL was used uh, in our study, so pupillary block was not reported. A total of nine eyes needed AGM beyond final follow-up period. None of the eyes needed ICL explantation in our case series, and none of the eyes developed any glaucomatous disc damage or vision loss during the follow-up period. So, uh, conclusion: elevated intraocular pressure is not uncommon following phacic IOL implantation. Sixteen percent in our series. Steroid response was the most uh, common etiology for elevated IOP, followed by retained viscoelastics in our study. Timely recognition with proper and prompt management of elevated IOP helps in preventing optic nerve damage. These are my references. Thank you. So uh, preoperatively, gonia was done in all the patients. Yes. Uh, for all the, I think four hundred eyes. Yes. Uh, total. And post-operatively also, what yes. device was used to measure the uh, uh, intraocular pressure? Uh, Goldman applanation. <laughs> For all the patients, you yes, had yes. Goldman applanation. Okay. So the initial slides you, you showed some case of juvenile glaucoma. And yes, and that was uh, um, reported in um, main reference. Yeah, not in, your not in my uh, study. Uh, This was reported in a similar study. Yeah. They uh, had more um, patients, actually more follow-up. All of the cases had PI in this. All of them you used the center. V four C we used, so none of them reported with PI. I mean, um, pupillary block. No, no. no. Huh? Did you do any prophylactic PI? PI not done because we were using now that V four B model is not available nowadays. So V four C only. So we were not using because of because it is already a hole. You did not mention the central corneal thickness of these patients. Why? Um, that, was <laughs> <laughs> that was not done. A complete evaluation was done. I didn't take that. See, uh, central corneal thickness as a parameter. So progressively over the period of years, as ICL has been written, is the is the rate of complication of secondary glaucoma reducing, or is it remaining it the same? As you see the publications, that's why I'm asking. It's increasing actually. Like secondary glaucoma, <coughs> even even is with the use of V4C, yeah. uh, pupillary block has been reported. Not in my study, but um, this my study had a follow up of three months only. It's a short term, but in long term, um, there are reports. Right. So in some centers, I have seen that PI have, is done, mm. even if they are using V4C. V4C. PI is done prophylactically and then putting a. Yes, so pupillary glaucoma is actually not 
the most common complication. So actually, no, open angle sure. glaucoma, which yes. it is a pupillary block glaucoma, that means something else has was supposed to be done has not been done. For example, you have not ruled out angle closure in mm -hmm. myopes. That mm -hmm. also has known mm -hmm. to occur. Mm -hmm. So proper evaluation is not done. So that's a different entity. But we're talking about only open angle, so. you don't get so much uh, if you are doing it, you know, in a methodological manner. So for complication related to open angle glaucoma, actually, report wise, they may be reducing. Okay. So we have to see how much we can bring down 15% mm -hmm. to even lesser. Okay. Because since we do, we hardly have, uh, I think, 4 or 3 or 2% patients okay. on uh, mm -hmm. secondary glaucoma. 15% okay. is quite high. high. Okay. Yeah, because okay. just imagine the plight of the patient. Post-op protocol, you huh. can change it. Because in PR case also, when we do higher <laughs> powers, sir. as you have rightly pointed out, myopic patients have yeah. this tendency More, to uh, respond. Yes, so maybe after first two weeks of dexamethasone or prednisolone, mm. You can go Change for to uh, low, low potent. Oh, okay. Lotiprednol now is available in higher strength also. Okay. Huh. One person. One person. No. So that you can shift so that uh, the comp comp uh, mm. steroid response can be reduced. Okay. Higher. Maybe in that uh, it, the number seems more because of your initial visco related thing. Yes. Sir. That you need not count as glaucoma, I think. Yeah. 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 That is transient. So if you remove that number, it, okay, it comes down. Come down. Okay. Yes. Your exclusion criteria, you would have excluded glaucoma, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, you would have excluded uh, yes, glaucoma. Sure, sure, yeah. So, um, based on <laughs> what <laughs> she <laughs> think it's a retrospective study. No, so what now the thing to be uh, learned or carry home message would be that you, when you are evaluating, what are the parameters you want to evaluate? Just only IOP or other things also you want to evaluate. You uh, would have done gonio and yes, you would have done IOP, yes, ma'am. Isn't it? So now, the other two <laughs> things is uh, whether you want to include uh, fields and uh, pachymetry. Uh, pachymetry. Invariably, these uh, are actually all in uh, that com com uh, before, uh, before the even in that complete uh, patient evaluation, fields is also included. I didn't um, uh, tell it, but then uh, pachymetry also will come, no? Because you are. Uh, uh, I didn't take that parameter. I mean, uh, for the for evaluation, analysis, analysis I didn't take, but uh, every uh, test, topography, that. everything will be done. Including HFA because and, uh, you have to. Going for and uh, for the mm. I didn't take that parameter for analysis. I didn't take. Yeah. It is actually a waste lot of chair time for you after the procedure. Mm -hmm. You know, sending mm. to another department, another person has to see. They have to counsel, and then they have to treat. They have to follow for three months. You know, it wastes so much of time. So if you can avoid it, mm -hmm. in the initial itself, then it's much much better. Okay. Okay. So this is a nice point you can take up. Now, okay. So. The first two weeks you can use a stronger stronger and, and then later the yeah. low potent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 Numbers are more in that. Uh, uh -huh. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.